Marketing always matters and we do it well And everything is guaranteed, service over sales Keep a hundred plus clients always satisfied all right, what's going on guys? We are back with the market statistics from January 2023. So let's see how the new year is kicked off and find out what we can expect going forward. The average sale price in Tulare County dropped again to $335,314. That's a year over year decline of 1.1%. Now we've been doing these market reports for at least the last six months. We've never seen a negative year over year return until this month. So. Uh, you know, year over year last month, I think was up a couple percent, but this is the first year over year from January, 2023, going back to January, 2022, where it's actually lower this month. Uh, whether we can expect that trend to continue, uh, you know, I don't know. Let's look at some of the other criteria and see if we can figure it out. So let's take a look at the trends for the last three years. In January of 2020, the average home sale price was $256,196. It jumped all the way to $325,957 in January of 2021. Now remember that's right as COVID is starting to, to hit its peak. COVID picked up right in here and we just saw home values just boom during COVID when people were stuck at home, working from home and realizing that they needed more space. Going from January 2021 to January 2022, there was a much more modest increase to $339,029. Uh, you know, you can see it did spike up quite a bit here, but ultimately fell back down. We did have a big spike in early 2022 as well, but we've just seen that drop off since about April, uh, all the way back down to, again, our first negative values. Now, whether that's a trend that's gonna continue and whether we're gonna continue to see home values drop, uh, you know, I don't know. We're gonna have to look at some of these other criteria and see what we can figure out. And so right now we're looking at $206 per square foot. That's a still 2.5% higher uh, than it was last year. Now, unlike average sale price, we've actually seen a year over year increase of 2.5% when we look at price per square foot. Looking at new listings, we're at 220 this month. Uh, and that's actually a little bit of an increase from what we've seen. We've just seen listings absolutely drop off since the middle of 2022. And in my opinion, this is a huge saving grace. To see it below 200, we haven't seen anything that low for the last three years at least. Uh, we really, really need inventory on the market and we're gonna see some numbers here that's gonna support that as well. But man, it is nice to see that spike in listings. But still, looking at the last three years, we're way below the average that we would expect in January. You know, typically we're up, a, up around 400, even down around 300 during the COVID years when things tightened up a lot more. Uh, and now we're sitting all the way down at 220, which is still quite a bit better than the 188 or whatever we had here. Homes for sale, just still dropping off. You know, uh, we had a buyer activity starting to pick up again a little bit, but we're just still not seeing the inventory coming on the market that we need. Uh, and, and you can see it here. The number of homes for sale has dropped all the way to 455 homes on the market in Tulare County. And that's a 20% increase actually from last year uh, where COVID, it was just an absolutely uh, just devastating time where sellers didn't want to list, people didn't want to leave their house. They didn't want people walking through their house for fears of you know what the pandemic would bring. And uh, you know it was just a really weird market. So to see things come back and recover a little bit and then just drop off like this is concerning. We need inventory, we need more homes on the market. Now the number of pending sales after dropping off for most of 2022 has actually spiked back up quite a bit. And that's the information that I'm pulling from when I say the buyer activity is starting to pick up. You know, in my own business, I'm also noticing a lot more buyers are starting to want to see properties and make offers on properties. But you can see the numbers right here. The number of pending sales spiked back up in January all the way up to 240. Uh, you know, that's still 23.6% below what we were looking at this time last year. So the activity has dropped off significantly, but at least it started to rebound as we're entering the new year. Again, comparing pending sales for the last three years, we're typically in the low 300s and now we're down around 240, but that spike certainly does make me feel a lot better about buyer activity. And again, you know, we're getting tax returns now. So a lot of this pandemic stuff is settling down and behind us. And so people are starting to feel more stable, uh, you know, with, with the current economic situation. The number of closed sales is still falling off pretty significantly. It dropped off a lot, but again, that's typical, right? There's not a lot of people who are, who are shopping for homes during Christmas season between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So to see closed sales falling off in January is not 
It's not new, it's not unexpected. It's typically something that we see. Um, and, and even big drop offs like we see here. But it's just because it's been so low that it's so concerning. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of see how things go from here. Again, looking at closed sales from the last three years, we're typically right in the mid 200s up to 286 in 2022. Right now we've had 165 closed sales in January. But again, we saw pending sales starting to spike. So we should see a lot of those come to fruition in next month's data. The number of days on the market has actually fallen back a little bit after spiking up above 30. We actually fell back to 27. That's still 145% higher than it was last year. Again, during COVID, it was just a mess. You were getting 20 offers on a property the first weekend to hit the market. And that's not to say that you can't sell your home in the first week still. In fact, that's my goal every time because after the first week, urgency just drops off. Once people know that somebody else isn't trying to get it, they're a lot less pressed to make their best offer. Uh, so we, we really try to price it to, to sell in that first week. But if not, your average is still coming back down. And, and again, I think a lot of that ties back to there's just no inventory, right? If you wanna buy a house, you've kinda of gotta pick from what's out there right now because there isn't much coming on the market. Again, looking at months of inventory, we're looking at 1.7 months of inventory, and that's been steadily falling over the last couple months. Still up over 40% from what we were seeing this time last year, but again, those were strange times. When we look at months of inventory, typically more than six months, more than five or six months is a buyer's market, and less than five or six months of inventory is typically a seller's market. And uh, so looking at those numbers only, you would say this is an extreme seller's market because there's just not enough inventory out there to support the number of buyers the problem is pricing is still being affected because the way rates have gone up, it's just decreased people's pricing power overall and it's made it tougher for people to pay $3,000, $4,000 for a mortgage. In summary, average home prices are still steadily declining as we enter 2023. The market is unlikely to pick up again until spring, but this is the first time that our year over year home values have not shown growth. Uh, up until now, we've always seen at least some percentage of growth but our growth was actually negative uh, year over year in January. Price per square foot fell to $206 per square foot. Even as the average sale prices declined, the price per square foot stayed fairly consistent throughout 2022, though it has been creeping down slowly in the last few months. Uh, this is an important one to watch because it's, you know, sometimes people will just buy a smaller home or sometimes people feel like they need more space than they actually need coming out of a pandemic where you've been stuck at home. Uh, and then, you know, once people go back to school and go back to work, they realize they probably don't need that much. And so price per square foot gives us a more accurate reading sometimes of what people are paying for a home rather than just how much they're willing to spend on a home. The number of new listings continued to fall sharply in December, but thankfully rebounded in January. With the available inventory being a major problem, this is refreshing to see. And sellers, it's something we need to keep seeing. So if you've been thinking of listing your home, please, 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 Think about listing it in the spring because the time is right. Pending sales and closed homes have fallen to the lowest levels that we've seen in three years, but we did see pending sales spike in January, a sign that buyer activity is picking up. Now, this might simply be due to tax returns and things like that, but I don't think so. You know, rents have been very high. It's hard to even find a rental right now. So if you're able to buy, it still makes sense for people to buy. And you know, how much they're willing to spend or able to spend is gonna depend on where rates go from here. But I do think buyer activity is going to pick up as we go into spring. Hopefully we've got the homes coming on the market to support it. Homes for sale are still declining all the way down to 1.7 months of inventory. Again, that's an extreme seller's market when you only look at that one piece of data. Obviously the average sale price declining and things like that, you know, are other factors to consider. Uh, but we definitely need more inventory on the market. And I just want to say again, activity always falls off during the holidays, plus interest rate hikes and toxic recession has folks nervous, which actually creates opportunity for buyers for the first time in years. See, a year ago, buyers were paying tens of thousands of dollars above asking price. They were paying for their own closing costs, and a lot of times they were paying for repairs. And sometimes they were even paying thousands of dollars more to cover a short appraisal because that was what gave them a chance to get the home that they wanted. Now today, buyers can negotiate a better price, they can get seller assistance with closing costs, and they can stop writing these appraisal gaps because there isn't the same amount of competition on the homes that are coming on the market right now. Sellers, this is where we are. Now prices have held up as well as we could possibly expect considering what the Fed has been up to in 2022. 
They've been raising interest rates. They've been spreading fear of recession. Uh, and there's people are afraid. People are nervous and they're worried about a housing market crash. Now the question is, will that crash come? I don't believe it will. Now Tulare County is highly desired and it's a special market which gives us some protection. Our home values are incredibly low for the amount of income that we make on average. In fact, I think it's the best in the state. And on top of that, all these metro markets, the home values are jumping and skyrocketing and it's driving people out and they're moving here. We're getting LA people moving here, San Francisco people moving here to the valley. So as people have to escape these super expensive markets, where are they gonna go? They're gonna go to the most affordable housing in California, Tulare County. If you purchased a year ago or more, you should have strong equity in your home. This reduces the risk of a major wave of foreclosures causing a crash in home prices. Again, if we go through, if you look year over year, now we finally hit negative year over year. So if you bought your home more than a year ago, you are in the positive. And even if you bought your home a year ago, I'm sure you've probably paid off the, the percent you know, that we're down. You're probably still in the positive. So at this point, people are talking about a housing crash because of foreclosures. I just don't think that many people are upside down yet. That said, the Fed is committed to stamping out inflation and even with rate hikes, every meeting, the positive impact to inflation so far has been minimal. Now, you look at some of these numbers and it looks good, other numbers not so good. The overall rhetoric from the Fed has still been that they're gonna be tight and, and that they're not gonna be opening up, they're not gonna be lowering rates. Um, and, and so we'll see how things go from here. In fact, many experts believe the actual recession is coming in mid-2023. I hear from a lot of investors who are talking about holding on to their money until Q3 of 2023. So, you know, there may be there may be some opportunity in the market over the next few months. Again, though, if you are trying to rent right now, there is no harm in you getting into the market because right now you're paying 100% interest on your payments. If you plan to sell your home within the next two years or so, this is the best time for you to do it. Inventory is low, new inventory is low, and homes priced properly are still selling quickly. So you can make a stack of profit before things potentially get really crazy in the market. I just wanna thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time when we come back for February's data. Take care. Having a little trouble, ask David, huh? When they never get it done, ask David, huh? They gon' wanna give a hand, ask David, huh? Be someone to save the day, ask David, huh? David, huh? David, huh? When they all fallin' short, pass me the baton.